Let us uh, start with a quick review of uh, the issues related with uh, stormwater runoff and or more accurately with excessive uh, stormwater runoff. As um, I shared with you uh, previously, we the three main issues that we have with the stormwater, uh, excessive stormwater runoff is quantity, quality, and weight, where we have a lot of water generated uh, by storm, excessive stormwater runoff, and our infrastructures, both natural or constructed, mainly just simply cannot keep up with the excessive or uh, volume of the water, and they simply get blown or destroyed and dam or damaged. Uh, this is one of the issues we have. The other issue is now that we have a lot of water moving downstream at a higher speed. It has a lot of energy, so it washes, it washes out our stream bank and it takes away with it the sediments and all the pollutants as well. And that, of course, uh, degrades the water quality of our uh, streams. So we have a quantity problem, a quality issue problem, and also too much water moving too fast or the rate problem. So these are the three main problems uh, or issues that are generated by excessive stormwater runoff. And um, again, I want to share with you this hydrograph that um, we talked about. Um, so what that excessive amount actually is generated when we uh, when we are on a landscape that's been altered and we have removed all the um, previous areas where the rainwater, where it falls on the landscape, can actually infiltrate into the ground, uh, where it's been replaced by hard surfaces, where the rain that falls on the landscape really has no place to go and finds its way very rapidly into our creek and streams. So again, this hydrograph is, if I'm standing in the creek and I'm looking at the, how much water is coming up in our creek after a rain event, if I'm in a natural area, I can see that the water in the creek rises. Well, this will be the time. This is the how much water is in the creek. Uh, this axis, um, the y axis, how much water we have in the creek. So, so if, as the time goes on, I can see after it rains, water rises a little bit in a, uh, a creek that's a natural area. And when the rain stops, it gently falls off as well. But when I, if I'm sitting in a creek that's uh, fed by a, uh, by a landscape from an urban area that has a lot of hard uh, surface, and where the, where the water or the rain falls on the landscape, it has no place for it to infiltrate into the ground and bind itself into the creek as a generator runoff. So the runoff, uh, the water in the runoff um, in the stream uh, rises very rapidly as soon as we have rain, and it also falls or uh, drops very quickly after the rain stops. So the creek is a flush, um, um, has a quick rise and a fall, and this is the amount of water or the excessive runoff that we have to deal with, and that is the one that causes the three problems of the quality, quantity, and rate. So, what, are, so what we said with the topic today was uh, stormwater management practices or stormwater practices and their types. Well, so stormwater practice, you can think of it as a solution. So any practice that we that can help us to bring this hydrograph down to its natural um, hydrograph that we can push, that we can minimize this excessive water, or we can slow this excessive water. So remember we had three main problems, quantity, quality, and runoff. So anytime we employ a practice that can minimize those three problems, address those three problems, and minimize this excessive runoff, then we're, we are having, um, we're using the stormwater uh, practices. But not all stormwater practices are the same, of course. There are different types, and folks can uh, categorize them depending how long they stay in the ground. Maybe they're temporary uh, practices, maybe they're permanent practices. But one of the um, major categories that we like to divide these practices to is structural versus non-structural stormwater practices. Um, so let me give you an example. Let's say we have a group of homeowners uh, that for decades, uh, anytime during fall, they gather the leaves, you know, they, uh, they get all the, the, they rake all the leaves on the yard and they bring it to the curb and they push it out into the curb and hoping for the leaves to somehow go away. And of course, we know where all those leaves end up into the gutter 
into the storm shore and eventually into our, our streams and lakes where they can be a source of excessive pollutants or, um, uh, or excessive nutrients such as phosphorus and again degrade the quality of our streams and lakes. But fortunately these homeowners getting get connected with the environmental educator that helps them to realize you know there is a better way of dealing with the leaves. We don't necessarily have to rake them, spend the energy collecting them and then putting them in the gutter. Maybe we can either mulch them right on our lawn or have it or come use and use them in a compost and deal with it uh, that way. Well, now this group of homeowners no longer are going to be putting those leaves into the gutter. So we have prevented a good amount of nutrients getting into our streams. And this is a very effective stormwater uh, practice. However, in developing this, in doing this stormwater practice, we didn't have to construct anything. We didn't have to employ any mechanical system, but mainly it was through education that we changed behavior. So it's, it is a very effective, very important uh, stormwater practice, but we didn't have to construct anything. So we refer to this type of uh, stormwater practices as, as non-structural um, stormwater practices. And they are always the most important and they're always the most effective. Anytime we can prevent uh, pollutants, prevent uh, the excessive stormwater runoff from being generated in the first place, we are um, going to be a lot more effective. So that's an example of um, non-structural stormwater practices. But what if I, uh, let's say, I have to deal with a huge development that has a large parking lot, and I have to now I have to capture all the water that falls on the parking lot, which is a hard surface again, and the water finds it very quickly into the streams. Now I have to capture all this um, water that's generated from the parking lot, hold it in the area allow time for any sediment, any other thing that's um, trapped into the water to fall, to settle to the bottom, and allow the water to become cleaner in a sense, and then gently let that water go downstream. And that's exactly what we do when we construct a water quality pond. So we have seen these ponds in many of your neighborhoods or by the highway systems, where we, what we do, we construct a big area or um, um, or medium-sized area of um, uh, create a pond where we capture all the surface water from it uh, from the parking lots, from the roofs, from the roads. We hold the water in these basins. We allow time, and we slow down the water flow. Let all the sediments to fall in the bottom, so we can trap the sediments in the bottom. And the, when the water becomes clear, then we gently allow the water move downstream, so we control the rate. So with the water quality ponds. We control, we, we control the rate and we improve the water quality. And this is an example of using a structural stormwater practices. So I hope that gives you um, an idea about the stormwater practices and the different types of the structural and non-structural stormwater practices. What I'd like to ask you, in the meantime, if you would um, study and try to come up with two examples, additional examples for uh, structural and non-structural stormwater practices. Thank you.